Welcome in to Moving the Chains, brought to you by Founders Federal Credit Union. I'm Kevin Thomas, and we are making a call to the bullpen. <laughs> We're going to bring in the flamethrower, Jarrell Hendricks, for tonight's show. We're here with our week five preview show. Jarrell, how you doing tonight, my man? Man, I am good. You know, try to bring the heat. You know, try to fill John's shoes, big shoes to fill there. Maybe not. It's probably worse like a size five, but it's fine. It's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, looking forward to previewing these games, man. Should be a lot of fun for sure. John is out of town this week, so it's it, myself and Jarrell here for our Week 5 preview show. You know, Jarrell, last week when we had, had this show, it was just loaded matchups all across the state, every classification, all corners of the Palmetto State as well. This week, not quite as much. You got a few more buys sprinkling in as well as we're getting ready for region play to come along. But, man, still a lot of really good matchups, huh? Yeah, most definitely. Looking forward to this week. Um, you know, I think this week the theme is going to be, you know, quality over quantity. Got a lot of teams, you know, with bye weeks, um, things like that, scheduling issues, you know, getting ramped up, you know, because you got the different, you know, regions, you know, some play six games, some playing five, some playing four. So, you know, it's a it's a situation where we don't have as many games, but I think we have some really good games on tap to talk about. No doubt about it. Well, if you guys have not seen us before, we appreciate you tuning in. Check us out here on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, et cetera, at Moving Chains. That's M-O-V-I-N-C-H-A-I-N-S. Our website, movingchains.com. Our podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, and more. We do a live preview show here on Tuesday nights about 7 o'clock. It's live on Facebook and YouTube. We preview the week's biggest games and the whole slate across the state. We do a recap show that comes out on Sundays. That's podcast uh, audio only there. It's a lot of fun as well. We do a Twitter slash X spaces on Friday night. Basically, it's a live scoreboard show. About 10, 30, 11, we have people from around the state hop in, talk about their favorite team, give us the scores. It's a lot of fun to do that as well. But, Terrell, let's get rolling here with our Kona Games of the Week. Check out Kona.care for all of their services. we got five good ones this week, Terrell. Let's start here in the 1A classification. We have Southside Christian traveling to St. Joe's. Southside Christian at 1 and 2, St. Joe's 5 and 0. Oh. Southside Christian 52 to 21 over Anderson Cavaliers last week. St. Joe 61 to 12 over Ware Shoals. Southside Christian led by quarterback Paul Coben had three touchdowns last week. Ethan Chandler running back, Zach Brewster wide receiver. The defense led by Matthew Doris, Michael McGowan, and Christian Kaiser. They do have two losses to drill, but they are both by a couple of points. You know, one point to Abbeville, and then two yep. points to Commerce out of Georgia. St. Joe's led by first year quarterback Cade Alt. They're not asking him to do a lot, they're really focused on the ground attack with uh, Braden Johnson and William Gillespie. Gillespie also probably their best receiver. Defensively led by Johnny Jurazuski, a huge player, had a lot of yeah. tackles last year. He's back again for them. And then Joe Patterson on that side of the ball as well. Drill, last year we saw these teams play twice. In the regular season, yeah. Southside Christian won 31-14. to In the playoffs, though, St. Joe's came back and got them 29-28 to in overtime. What do you think happens this week in this big 1A Greenville County matchup? Man, I just got to look at the resumes, you know, just seeing the disparity in games played, you know, with St. Joe's playing five games, Southside Christian only playing three so far. Um, I think St. Joe's just has so much momentum there, um, and they've played so well. Um, I started looking at the statistics. I like the numbers, man. They're scoring 43.6 points a game, giving up 6.4. I mean, that's impressive regardless of who you're, who you're playing, but they've played some teams like Landrum. You know, that's they've got a dynamic backfield up there. They shut down Seneca. Like you said, this week put up 61 points. Um, and then going to Southside Christian, they're no slouch either. They played twice last year, like you mentioned. Um, two very good games. This is going to kick off region play, kind of a rivalry game. Going to set the tone because we know that's a three-headed monster in that region. Uh, but how will they bounce back, you know, from losing those tight games? You know, they lost a lot from last year. Corey Martin, Michael Woodfield, you know, replacing the, that, you know, senior leadership there. How can they bounce back? That's a tough one, you know, to, to kick off your region against St. Joe's in a rivalry game there. Uh, it's going to be a tight one, but I just got to lead in St. Joe's just based on the resume so far. These teams seem to always play close games, it feels like. Uh, you know, I like I like the Kobe kid at quarterback a lot for the Sabres, but just like you said, not a lot of playing time yet. Only, you know, yeah. three games, you know, on, on the ledger is, is not a ton. Hadn't really got comfortable yet with that offense, it feels like there. St. Joseph's defense is so good, man. Uh, the Jaruzowski kid can really play, really get after it. If they can get that run game going, I think they win this ball game. I like St. Joe's at home in a close one, but should be a, a really fun one there on Friday night. Drill, any comments from the chat we need to address on that ball game for me on our next corner game of the week? 
nothing so far. We'll we got some some shout outs. So let's let's go ahead and, and, and do that real quick. And we got Miriam Myrtle Beach coming up here in a minute for sure. That'd be a big one. Derek, good to see you as always, buddy. Robert, what's going on, man? Big matchup for Dylan this week. Dadrian Louisville. I mean, you just keep putting up 70 and shutting guys out, man. Nothing to it, huh? Pretty easy. Pretty easy. But our next Kona game of the week. This is a fun one here, Jarrell. A, a 2A, 3A cross matchup here. Two undefeated squads as well. And that's Saluda. The Tigers at 2 yeah. traveling to Gilbert. The Indians at 4 0. Both squads 4 9. If I said or not, but both schemes are undefeated. Uh, yeah. go to Gilbert America over there. Really tough place to play, as always. Saluda, 9 to 6 victory over Emerald last week. Ken Main Brunson leading their rushing attack is a really good player for them. The quarterback, Drew Arand, is back from last year. They've got another running back, Braden Williams, get some carries as well. This team is very young. We mentioned they graduated 30-something seniors last year. Only got nine seniors on this year's squad. Yeah. We'll see how they perform in a, you know, their first really big, tough test there. Gilbert, maybe the surprise of the week last week with a 14-3 to victory over Lexington, going up two classes, winning that ball game over a rival. Really impressive there. Quarterback Drake Braddock, watch your Matt. Matt Edwards, running back Jalen Jay, efficient on the ground and a good receiver out of the backfield as well. Listen to these stats, Trey. Last week, the defense said they had six sacks and hit Lexington to 165 yards of offense. I mean, that is playing some defense right there, led by Sean Bowler, Caleb Streis there at the, at the linebacker spot. Last year, Saluda won this game pretty easily, 33-21. to 21. Can they do it again, or do you like Gilbert at home? I got to go Gilbert, man. You got to think about the momentum they have after last week. Did not know those uh, defensive statistics. You know, I know they won the game. You know, they held them to three points, you know, but holding them under, what, 150 yards of total offense is simply ridiculous. You know, Coach Lee Park really has those guys playing good football. Um, I I think Saluda's is good, yeah. but that kind of scares me as far as, you know, their last you know game against Emerald only putting up nine points like that's not going to be enough. You're putting up nine points against Emerald. You're going up against this defense that completely shut out a 5A team in Lexington. Um, that's cause for concern. But again, I, I think this is a great matchup for both teams. Uh, don't like that youth with Saluda, you know, not necessarily youth, but, you know, losing so much from that talented squad last year. Uh, but this is the craziest stat for Gilbert, man. They've been flying under the radar. Mm -hmm. Got to think, they lost their two best playmakers in that backfield, yep. you know. Elias Graham Woodbury, and then Jay Nell Hendricks, who we saw last week, you know, just running people over for Irmo. Imagine how good that team would be if they had a, a big Jaden in the backfield there. But give me Gilbert in this game. I, I'm I'm very comfortable in saying the Indians pull off the victory. This is a ball game where I love both the head coaches. You know, Stuart Young at Saluda does a fantastic job. And obviously, Coach Lee Part there at Gilbert is a legend of the game. You know, the all-time wins leader now with his alma mater there. I love Ken Main Brunson at Saluda. He's a stud on both sides of the ball. Yeah, I worry about him getting worn out a little bit uh, against a higher class team that's gonna have a little more depth. You know, Gilbert's always you know big and physical, and just has a lot of players. It feels like as well down there. And then on top of that, man, I said it to start the the preview here. Playing down at Gilbert, man, Gilbert America, as they call it, that's a tough place to play. I like what the Indians are doing. I like Drake Braddock back there, quarterback, a guy with some experience. Ran that offense for a couple of years now. I think he's a good player. I think they win this game. I think Gilbert's a lot better than we gave him credit for you know, a couple yeah. weeks ago. I think the Indians roll here by by probably 14 points or so. Yeah, the only thing that scares me with Gilbert, you know, that was a high, you know, emotion game last week. Yeah. You know, you're playing a bigger school. You're playing a rival, you know, very close to each other. You know, are they able to put back-to-back -back performances together against Saluda? Because, you know, you mentioned Coach Young and, and those guys. They're used to winning. They won this game last year. Uh can Gilbert, you know, stack up those victories? That's the only concern, uh, but it's a small concern. I, I, I think Gilbert's going to win this football game too. Agreed, agreed. Any comments on this ball game here, Drew? We need to address. Oh, we got a couple. Bulldog, I think, yeah, I, I think Gilbert by a couple scores as well, man. It feels like those boys are rolling right now. They're going to be a tough out for anyone in 3A. But is Lexington that good this year? Also, best player running back. Yeah, that's one thing I've worried about too, Zach. You know, I like the quarterback, Tate Mines, but lost some receivers too, along with Jonah Norris. They've been kind of pounding the ball up front, and Gilbert taking that away um, was really impressive last week. Alexian, I think we'll see more about them as when region rolls around, of course, but I like that Gilbert squad um, a lot. But, Terrell, let's look now. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, we can go to the next game. That's Perfect. all we had for that one. Let's look now at our third corner game of the week. Drill, this might be my favorite game of the week, actually, thinking about it now. And that's Marion at 5-0. and 
traveling oh, yeah. to Doug Shaw Stadium to play Myrtle Beach. The Seahawks three and one. Last year, Myrtle Beach won this game forty six to twenty eight. Last week, Marion defeated Shaw forty to three. Myrtle Beach had a bye. Uh, Gabe Cusack for Marion went five for seven, a buck forty seven, a touchdown to the air. Twelve carries for eighty yards. Two more touchdowns last week. Quashid Scott had two touchdowns rushing and touchdown receiving. The running backs, Reeves and Edie, are good players. Watching for Wilson's a good player. The defense led by Edie and Pearson and Tyshawn Sanders, the App State commit. Uh, Scott as well on that side of the ball. And, of course, uh, Cusack, the quarterback, playing some playing some linebacker as well. So a lot of talent there for those guys. Myrtle Beach led by Malachi Washington, one of our favorites in the state, a great running back for them. He's a really good player. Good offensive line led by Shrine Bowler, Brady Pickett. Gibson Goodrow, the quarterback, you guys remember from a couple weeks back, just started playing football. You know, he's been a big baseball yeah. player. Getting more and more comfortable now at that start quarterback role, kind of leading that offense there. I like the receiver Simmons a lot. The linebacker Ricky Escobar is a good player for them. Last year, I think, Drill, like I said, this game went 46-28. I think it was like 22-20, to Marion, after the first quarter. The Swan Foxes kind of fell off there. And you, you do worry about the depth, uh, you know, when you're yep. going up two classes like that. I'll tell you what, I think Marion's got a really good chance to win this game. Uh, another thing I haven't mentioned yet, and I'll tell you, I think this is why I think they can win it, is that they're very dangerous in the return game. Kwashi Scott, yeah. I feel like, has taken two or three kicks back to the house already this year. In a ball game with a lot of athletes like this where it's close on both sides, I think the Swamp Foxes can pull it off. Yeah, I don't I don't know yet, man. I've been waffling on this one, too. This is also probably my favorite game to watch this week. Um not really sure what to make of Myrtle Beach because, you know, I'm going back and looking at the numbers, looking at the schedule. You know, start off getting blown out by Camden, who has shown to not be as good as Camden normally is. Um, then they roll off three in a row against 5A teams, you know. Yeah. So they lose to a 3A team, then they knock down two, you know, three straight 5A teams, um, you know, very easily for the most part other than Sockesty. Um, but then Marion, man, they are so talented. Like you said, those those top three guys that they have, Cusack, Scott, Martin, they are so good. And especially, you know, Scott on the back end too. Their defense has been fantastic. They've given up 52 points this season. Um, really the only, I would say, the closest game would be Lakeview, and that's a week zero Thursday yeah. game, you know, where, you know, Cusack got it done with his legs that game. I think he scored four rushing touchdowns. This one's a tough one to pick. Um, just to be safe, I'll say Myrtle Beach. They've got the momentum going in there. I do worry about them wearing down, but that's no knock on Marion. I think Marion is a legitimate top five team in the state. Um, I think Marion is going to make a run towards the state championship. I just think Myrtle Beach is probably going to lean on them a little bit. And like you saw last year, it might just separate at the end of the game. Myrtle Beach coming off a bye as well is a big plus for them. Coach Mickey Wilson knows what he's doing there. And I tell you, nobody's throwing on Marion all year. I mean, if you're going to attack yeah. them, you've got to run the ball because you're not throwing on Scott and Sanders all night long. You're just not. You're, they're they're going to pick off at least one or two of yeah. those. But Myrtle Beach, I don't think they want to throw it a whole lot. I think they want to rely on Malachi White. I think two weeks ago he had 200-plus in the third quarter uh, through, through through that ball game, so he can get it on the ground. But I'm going to go with the Swamp Foxes, man. I think they win a close one here. I think this is a different Marion team. The last couple years we talked about how they've been so hot and, and just kind of fell off the cliff in the playoffs. This yeah. year they've been playing really consistent. It feels like uh, you know full games, not you know starting off hot and falling off. I think it's a diff different Swamp Fox squad. I think they pull the win over the bigger Myrtle Beach team uh, this Friday night. Yeah, and I like Marion too. Bounce back against Shiraz. You know they had that embarrassing loss in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. You know, good to see them do that. And I said Martin instead of Sanders. I don't know. He's a Super seventy five guy. I mean, we had three three yeah. Super seventy five guys from that school there. Um, but I, I I do. I just think Myrtle Beach is going to be a little bit too tough as this game wears on. And I think it's going to be a close one, though. Very, very close matchup. For sure. What comments do we have on this ball? I think I saw a couple rolling in as we were going. Let's see what we got. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Wilson, uh, you know, that was a, a good ball game last year. Wilson pulled away second half this year. Marion, you know, didn't let that happen and, and beat them pretty handily, it felt like. Uh, I think something similar could happen this week. And of course, we got to throw this up there. You mentioned it already. Hey, no, exactly right, Corey. I mean, it, you can't pass on those guys, man. If you guys haven't seen the the highlight tapes of Qua Quashid Scott and Tyshawn Sanders, go watch so those guys can fly around the football. Yeah, that's all we got. Let's move on to the next game, Kev. Perfect. Our fourth corner game of the week. This game was a thriller last year, and that's West Florence traveling up to the Upset to take on the Burns Rebels. West Florence three and one, Burns four and one. West Florence coming off a bye. Two weeks ago, Franklin Emerson, who's playing quarterback and linebacker for them, and they went over Dreer, ran for four touchdowns, threw for two more. 
the running back transfer, Trey Leonard from Trinity Collegiate. Really good talent, but hasn't really gotten it going yet this year, it feels like. Uh, I don't know if he's just kind of, you know, still feeling comfortable with his with his guys or what, but he hadn't quite really broken out yet. Defensive back Kelvin Hunter, a South Carolina commit. He is a really good ball player, flies around in the back end of that secondary. Also big in the return game for them as well. Also catches a few passes, runs a few balls, things like that as well on that side of the f- football for them. Burns, 28-7 victory over Wren. Quarterback Andrew Stevens seems to be settle- settling in. He had 262 and two touchdowns last week. The freshman running back Trey Segura, Keeps putting up numbers. We know about Weaver and Bomar, the big playmakers outside for them. Defensively, they played really good football also lately as well between Oates and Foster and Livingston. You know, last year, Drill, this ball game with Stu on the radio, we were over at Dorman. Wes yeah. Lawrence, a late touchdown as time expired to win 22 to 19. A little bit of a revenge factor for the Rebels here this week, you think. Uh, who do you like in this ball game? I like the Rebs in this one, man. They seem like they've gotten their, their issues worked out. You know, they had the big win at Huff, had a short week, and, you know, week one playing against Chapman, who's a very good football team, and losing that game, you know, kind of falling apart in the second half there. But since then, they've just put together three complete performances. Um, This game's at Nixon Field. You know, it's going to be packed there. You already mentioned the revenge factor um, in this football game, you know, with West Florence winning it tight last year. Late walk-off win there. I think Burns is going to have something to prove. I think they're they're going to need this game as well, you know, for a confidence builder. I think this is going to set them up to go into their bye, and we know they're going to go into the playoffs, and they play in one of the most difficult regions um, in 5A football. So they, they really need to win this game. <clears throat> West Florence, I mean, we mentioned the players. I think they've taken a little bit of a step back from last year with how good they are. Yeah. You know, we looked at that Lexington loss early in the season and kind of didn't ding them for that because we thought Lexington is better than they've shown to be thus far. Um, but, you know, they really just haven't had the level of competition, um, you know, to kind of justify me saying I think that they're going to go into Nixon Field and defeat Burns. Uh, but I think Burns wins this game. Two touchdowns, you know, 14, 70 points. It's going to be a comfortable victory for them. Well, it's Florence led by head coach Jody, Jody Generet. Uh, he's an aggressive guy. Going to pull out all the stops for sure in this ball game. But I think you're right. Drew. I think Burns. What I wanted to see a couple weeks ago is more consistency out of those guys. You know, and they, and they put together a few good performances in a row now on both sides of the ball. I think that continues. I think they win this game. Um, I, I do like what what Florence is going to do. I think they're going to get better throughout the year and get better and better. But I don't think they're quite yeah. good enough yet. I like Burns uh, to win this game as well over Nixon Field. Yeah, for sure. I I really just I think that's going to be the difference. And I think Burns just really has figured it out the last few weeks, you know, getting that big bounce back against Greenville rivalry game against Greer and then, to, you know, defeating that Wren team who's very solid. Um, I need to talk about the Burns kicker. We need to, you know, this is football, <laughs> football, not soccer. He needs to realize that. Uh, but I, I think the Rebs are going to roll in this one. Yeah, you, you know, you got to wonder if Kelvin Hunter, if he's ready for that this week, if he breaks one on a return, if we're ready to jump over the slide tackle or not. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, <laughs> but, sure, uh, man. That was wild stuff, man. Wild yeah, stuff. Yeah, any, any comments from the crowd on this ball game? Uh, we got Zach in here, definitely. Yeah, Nixon Field's tough, man. Should be a great crowd this week, I would think. Uh, you know, it, it may be homecoming. I haven't seen, you know, for sure, but it's, it's getting about that time of year, so it could be an even better crowd than usual. Most definitely. That's the only comment we got on this one. Perfect. We'll look now at our Skiza game of the week from Kona here, and that's two undefeated teams as well, Jarrell. Patrick Henry at 5-0, traveling down to Clarendon Hall at 4-0. Patrick Henry, 33-20 to of Greenwood Christian last week. Clarendon Hall, 46-14 to over Kings. The Patriots, quarterback Hugh Ferry, 13 for 23, 229 and two touchdowns and 79 yards on the ground. Mathis and Brunson leading them at running back. Mathis catching the ball, too, is a threat for them. Defensively led by Berg, Searles, and Mathis. Quarterback Hall, on the other hand, quarterback Brock Mathis, running back Darius Aiken. He's a big time playmaker, averaging over 160 per game on the ground. Defensively led by Mathis, Tommy Lee Atkinson, Wilder Robinson, Noss, and Reynolds. Last year, Drill, Patrick Henry won this game 22 to 16, a really close one there in one A the ski in the one A skiza ranks. I'm gonna go Clarendon Hall at home. I think Darius Aiken, too much of a, a talent, too big of a playmaker there. I think they win this ball game. Well, this is certainly one we could see down the road in the playoffs again. You are the skis expert, but I'm going to say not so fast. I'm going to go Patrick Henry, man. I I, I like what they've done so far. Um, I think they're going to win this game. 5-0 and start. Um, again, looking at the numbers, they scored at least 33 in every contest they've mm-hmm. played so far. Pitched two shutouts there. Um, you know, Clarendon Hall, 
their schedule. You gotta you gotta school me on this this skeezer ball too, man. They played Kings twice, once home and I, away. I think that's a uh, Max or Preps is, issue. Is, I think that's a Max or, Preps issue. Okay. Yeah. I I even looked at the website to clarify, and I, I it, it I don't know. I looked at I looked at the Clarendon Hall website, so we'll see what what's going on there. Uh, but I do like I do like Patrick Henry to win in this ball. I, I tell you what's funny, Drill. When I wrote these games out earlier today, I'm always thinking, you know, who do I want to pick? And I write this down. I'm like, all right, I'm going to take Patrick Henry. I get on the show. I say, Clarendon Hall. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I'm actually going to flip back to Patrick Henry now. Um, I like the dual threat quarterback. I like the fairy kid. I think the Patriots win this ball game and run it to six and zero uh, on the season. Drill. Any more comments from folks uh, about any of these ball games, or even just not these, but just any games in general? Yeah, I got I got Jeffrey in the chat. You know, let's go Patrick Henry. Know. Yeah, this is going to be a great ball game in one A, Jeffrey. Hope uh, if you're there, I'd love to get your thoughts on it. I'd love for you to uh, shoot that over to us. I think the game that would be great to have from you. Some games twice, one is or not. Gotcha, gotcha, Allison. Yeah, and I know that sometimes in the skis or ranks, depending on location, geography, or whatnot, you, you can play twice, but I thought that was maybe a, mis, a mishap, but it, it could be correct for sure. Yeah, I did get clarification. They did play Kings twice, once at perfect. home and one on the road. So yeah, they they smoked them both times. So good, perfect, good there. Perfect, uh, perfect. But we'll run through some run through some comments real quick, just in general. Knock these Lewis out. looking up zero. Yeah, uh zero over the last four weeks is pretty tough there. Adrian, good evening, Zach. Good to have you, man. Clinton will be bouncing back for sure. Yeah, that was a tough loss, but they'll be ready to roll. We know they will be. Terrence, Hampton County making noise. Yeah, that's the team we've gotten our top five in two way. Uh, was close to being a game of the week this week. Got a big matchup against BC. We'll talk about here in a little bit. Patrick, good to have it. you here, my man. Uh, tough one for Gaffney. Like we talked about last week, I mean, two good teams. Gaffney's going to be fine. I didn't see it being a blowout like it was. That was kind of surprising, but I mean, two really good football teams there. Terrence, good to have you in here, man. Hopefully, Demarco Olar gets it turned around here quickly for you. We'll get to this one later for yep, sure. Yep, Anthony Dillon Marber, the How Highway Nine robbery. We'll talk about that here in a little bit for sure. Yep, I think that's all we've got right now, and then we'll keep uh we'll keep rolling. Perfect. So once again, our five Kona games of the week: we got Southside Christian at St. Joe's, Saluda at Gilbert, Marion at Myrtle Beach, West Florence at Burns, and Patrick Henry at Clarendon Hall for our skis of game of the week. Those are always brought to you by Kona, our great friends over there. Drill, uh, before we run a spot for our for our friends of the program, if you guys are just tuning in now and you miss one of those games, you can always go back and listen to it once we get done. Let's check that out after the show here. But Drill, let's go a quick shout out to our friends of the program before we get into the 5A slate. Take your financial game to the next level with Founders Federal Credit Union. Reach your full potential. Relax. Join Founders today. Visit an office near you or relaxjoinfounders.com to apply. Federally insured by NCUA. Member qualification required. Carolina Orthopedic and Neurosurgical Associates, Kona, offers the most advanced training and experience in orthopedic surgery, neurosurgery, sports medicine, and pain management in the upstate. Three convenient locations in Spartanburg, Duncan, and Greenville. Go to Kona.care to learn more. Perfect. Let's take a look now, starting at the 5A slate drill. Feel free to hop in with any comments you have about these ballgames as we go through them. We've got Chapin at AC Flora, a Chapin team that's been hot. People are not talking a lot about yeah. those guys, but they keep winning, it feels like, huh? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think Chapin's won uh, four in a row, three in a row now. Uh, just played some really good football. AC Floor going in the other direction. Uh, just has not played as well as we expect him to do. Had some big losses from last year's team, uh, but just not, you know, level competitive competition, you know, competitiveness. That's what I want to say. Competitiveness. That's what I want to say um, this year from the Falcons. Uh, but I think Chapin's a very good football team. That's a, It's going to be a good test for them to see how good they are this week. We've got Conway at Ainer, Clover at Bowling Springs. Fun game here, Drill. I feel like Clover's getting yep. to figure out a little bit on offense. Uh, the Hoover kids slinging it around. You know, Coach Woolbright's getting those guys like to run the system like he wants to. Bowling Springs, we saw them firsthand two weeks ago. They got a quarterback, the Leakin Husky kid there. They can score points as well. I think Clover, I was going to say I like Clover in this game, and I think I do. Yep. I think it should be a really fun matchup over there in uh, Spartanburg County. To be the contrarian I am, let me go with Bull and Springs in that one. I was really impressed with Lincoln Husky, man. He's a, he's a very good talent, uh, but I do like Clover as well. I, I think these are two teams that are trending the right direction. We've got May River at Kane Bay, a fun low country ball game down there. Two hard-hitting teams, I think, in that one. We've got North, Dutch Fork hosting Weddington at North Carolina. Don't look now, folks. Dutch Fork's won <laughs> two in a row. Um, yeah. Don't write them off quite yet. And I saw some reports that John Hunt may be back sooner rather than later as well for the Silver Foxes. So we'll see how that goes at the quarterback spot. But big game there. All, as always, pulling for our home state teams over the uh, out-of-state opponents. 
Yeah, they're going to face the fighting Will Shipley's there at Weddington. I think that's where he's from. Uh, But, yeah, man, like you said, Dutch Fork, they finally found some offense. You cannot count those guys out. You cannot count out Coach Knotts. They're going to be there at some point this season. Don't worry about it. A big 5 matchup here, Gaffney at Fort Dorchester. Gaffney, obviously a little bit beat up after last week, kind of upset about that game. This ball game was really tight last year. They they beat Fort Dor- Dorchester at the reservation. Fort Dorchester smote Berkeley last week, Jarrell. I'm a little worried about the quarterback spot. I know I talked to the guys a couple weeks ago, and, and Fort D was still kind of rotating guys a little bit. I don't yeah. think they got that settled yet or not. I like the running back, Brown. I like the receiver, Snyder. I like the defense a lot. But you're, you're playing a pissed-off Gaffney team. Just be fresh with it. I mean, and I think I think Gaffney's got a good chance to get on there and win this game. I think it's a must-win for Gaffney. After the performance last week, um, I think they need to get that bad taste out of their mouth. They did it earlier when they they played Crest. Mm-hmm. The hard-fought game, they were able to bounce back, string some things together, play some good football. Uh, but they need to win that game more so just because of the performance that they, they showed against Northwestern. That game was not close. You know, I know we predicted that um, – Northwestern was going to win the football game, and Northwestern is a top three team in the state, regardless of class. Um, but I don't, I don't know what to to make of Gaffney so far. Looking at their score lines, um, I think they're going to be very good, but I think they need to win. And four uh, D, you know, they're trending up too. They've kind of been forgotten about. You know, Somerville's getting all the pub in the Low Country. How good is Fort D? They've had a lot going on with the program the last six months or so. Uh, but I think Gaffney is going to win the game because they really need to. Yeah, long road trip. I don't know if they're leaving, uh, I guess, probably pretty dang early on Friday morning, I would think, for that one. But uh, I like the Indians in a close one here. But we will learn a lot about both teams with how this one turns out uh, for sure on Friday night. We've got York at Fort Mill, White Knoll at Lancaster, Spartanburg at Malden. Jarrell, the Vikings found their offense last week. Uh, They kind of woke up on that side of the ball, it felt like. And that's scary, man. I think they put up 40-plus in that game. You know, Coach Hodge has been preaching about how good this team is, and it's finally starting to come together. Um, I think that win over Dutch Fork early in the season is going to look better and better as the the season progresses. Um, The Vikings are a scary team. Again, they're in that that region 2 and 5A. It's going to get really, really tough for them. But if the Vikings can get the offense role and the defense has been, you know, lights out all season. Carolina Forest travels down to North Myrtle Beach. Nation Ford at Richland Northeast, Dormant at River Bluff, Northwestern at Rock Hill. A fun rivalry game there, all you know, at D3 Stadium. But I think last year this one was like, what, 70 to 0 or something bad, Jarrell? Uh, it's going to be uh, similar. Rock Hill, you can't let that happen again. You know, that they, they Rock Hill's put up some points the last two weeks over LR and then uh, I think York last week in a loss. They need to get on the scoreboard. Um, I don't know if it'll stay competitive or not, but you don't want to get beat by 60. I think that's your goal. Yeah, I think they'll get on the scoreboard. <laughs> I would hope so. You know, they got Shrine Bowl quarterback Matthew Wilson there. You know, I think they'll be fine. But I think Northwestern, and I said top three, like they may be the best team. Yeah. They are that yeah. freaking good. Um, I don't think it's going to be close, though. I think Northwestern's going to roll them. Turbo Richard is back, and he is playing some football for those guys. Woodmont at Seneca, St. James at Stratford, Goose Creek at Somerville, Oceanside at Sumter. You know, Oceanside oh, yeah. defeated Sumter last year. I think it was 19 to nothing, um, I believe, in that ball game. Two teams that, that right now seem to be pretty focused on the defense side of the ball. Sumter's got back to back losses they're coming off of. I think they lose three in a row. I think Oceanside beats them again. Yeah, it's going to be number three coming up. I think Oceanside's way better. Sumter's got to figure something out. Um, because they've just been exposed the last two weeks. Uh, I think Oceanside is a very good team. Uh, I know you talked to Coach Wilkes, you know, in the private chat line. They haven't they haven't played very good yeah. football, according to him, this season. So that's that's a scary thought. They're, they're a very good football team, and Sumter's a team that's going to need to do some soul-searching and, and figure some things out um, because it hasn't looked good the last two weeks. We've got West Ashley traveling to Timberland, Lawrence at T.L. Hanna, J.L. Mann at Wade Hampton, Ashley Ridge at Wando. Ashley Ridge playing great football right now. Derek Sally, junior receiver, is getting it yeah. done. Quarterback Jeff Tate's got those boys rolling. They're playing really good down there. And then to wrap up the 5A slate, a game with a lot of ties here, Drill. Hillcrest at Rent. Uh, oh. Rent new head coach, Anthony Freight, coming over from Hillcrest. Uh, the Rams playing really good football. A big win last week over Pattersville. The offense got rolling. It felt like Avery McFadden became the all-time leading 
uh, career touchdown receiver for for the Rams. Uh, I think with with twenty six something like that now. Um, so hats off to to Avery. That number will probably be in the thirties uh, before he gets done here uh, in a few weeks. And Ren, they play a lot of tough ball games. You know, they, they played Jefferson out of Georgia, lost to them, uh, but we're still competitive. Same thing with T.L. Hanna. You know, twenty seven last week to Burns is, is not a blowout. I would say um, they beat Seneca. They put up a lot of points on Seneca and kind of blew those guys out. Yeah, I don't think Ren's gonna have to win this ball game. Uh, but they could keep it keep it interesting for sure. Yeah, this is one of those weird ones. You know, you know, Coach Freight is familiar with that program, familiar yeah. with the the you know the personnel there. Um, so he can he's done some advanced scouting, you know, so to speak. So he knows what they're going to present. You know, obviously, Coach Swigert brings a lot of different things. You know, coming from the college ranks, his offense is complex. Obviously, got a new trigger man, um, and Caleb Sutton for the Rams. Uh, but this one could be interesting. I would not be surprised if this is a one score game. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Ren won the game. I don't think they Whoa. will. I, no, I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised just because of the familiarity that he has with that program. Uh, but I think the Rams have just played too well this season and they have too much talent uh, for Ren to, to hang on. Yeah, I like Hillcrest in that one. That's all our 5A slate. Drew, any comments uh, we need to uh, get to here? Let's see what we got. Um, We'll throw this one up there. Yeah, Thurman North Augusta, that was in the running for games of the week. It was Zach. Uh, we'll get it out in here in a second uh, for sure. Yeah, Patrick Turbo is legit. One of our players of the week uh, scored four touchdowns last week. He, he can get it done, man. The, the BC commit. Yeah, fighting Will Shipley. Yeah, that was a good comment there, Drew. I like that one. Corey says Northwestern probably going to repeat Rock Hill 70-0. to zero. I think that's close to what it was last year, Corey. So it could certainly happen again. And before we get going, we got a college question here for for both of us about uh, Clemson FSU. What's your thoughts on it? Oh uh, man, um, Tigers are getting better. They're still not very good yet. I don't think uh, Florida State. They will play more like they did against LSU than they did, than they did against BC this week. I feel like um, I'm not going to say Clemson's going to lose because just, it's just against me to pick that. Um, let me get like 24, 21 Tigers. I'll I'll say it. Uh 37, 37 14 Clemson. Oh. I would say like 17 or, or 20, but they they can't make field goals. So we'll go from there. <laughs> good call. Good call, man. Anything else from 5A drill? No, not that I see. Let's keep rolling. Perfect. Looking down at the 4A ranks, we've got your devil dogs, Travelers Rest going to Berea. I like their chances. Well, hey man, dog bowl. They got a shot. They should win. They should get their second win on the season. A good Berea's matchup here down in, down in the low country. Buford at Bluffton. Uh, Bluffton quarterback Owen Hayes. A uh, couple good good players out yeah. there. Those guys are the Bobcats have some, have some squad or some players on that squad. Buford getting it turned around there. Uh, you know, Samari Bonds getting it figured out. Coach Libran's getting it figured out. I think Buford wins that ball game, but that will be a good test for both teams. Yeah, most definitely. Like you said, Owen Hayes, man, he's played lights out. Bluffton's played a pretty tough schedule. It's hard to gauge, you know, with them being so close to Georgia. They play those teams across the border played, a lot. Yeah, three teams out of Georgia and then Battery Creek. <laughs> yeah. I can't tell. I don't know anything about those guys, you know. And, and Battery Creek's not any good, so that yeah. one, that one's tough there. Um, but I, I like Buford, man. They're they're one of those teams. I'll, I'll liken them to to Dutch Fork. You know, they're kind of figuring things out. They did the same thing last year. They yeah. just schedule so tough non-region. Got a big win against May River last week. Defense is is playing well. Coach Libran will figure out what to do on offense, and um, I think the Eagles are going to have something to say before it's all over. We've got Southside at Easley, Westside at Greer, Airport at Irmo. I want to stop here for a second, Drell, just mention Irmo. You know, we, we talked about them last week uh, against Hartsville. We both thought Hartsville was going to win the ball game. Oh, we yeah. went down to Kellytown Stadium, and Irmo, I mean, basically dominated that game. I mean, they were they were big, bigger, they were more physical. You know, Hartsville did have some injuries. Quarterback McKendry Douglas was out. Linebacker. Uh, uh, Webb Barnes was out as well. Yeah. I think one lineman, lineman may have been out as well for Hartsville. But Irmo, man, Jay Allen Hendricks, four touchdowns on one of our players of the week. Uh, Coach Brand has those guys rolling right now. I think they win again. Airport's improving. But I think yeah. Irmo's a little too uh, a little too much firepower for those guys. Yeah, I think I think Irmo wins this game comfortably. They're just a physical team. Mm -hmm. um, just that running game gets going, that offensive line. But as we talked about in the recap show, I was more impressed with that defense. They, they yeah. really flew to the ball. But Coach Fid – what an improvement for airport. They, they've done really good this year. Um, I just think they're they're running into a bus all this week um, and kind of skipped over West side. That's another team I want to talk yeah. about. West side is playing some fantastic football right now. Uh, they are getting it done. Cutter Woods is having an impressive season and he's doing it without his number one option right now. Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. They're putting up points on the board. We got Swansea at Midland Valley. 
Mustang's still undefeated, man. I think they continue to roll. I think this gets yeah. into uh, to six and I believe after this week if they win this one. Um, they are playing great football under Coach Chapman there, looking really, really impressive. The game Zach asked about, I think I saw Omar as well ask about this one. Strom Thurmond at North Augusta, a two A four A matchup. This is a really, really intriguing ball game to me, Jarrell. Um, yeah. Strom, you know that they had the loss to Midland Valley, but it was a close loss, and they were playing the different quarterback. They bring in quite yeah. in late. Um, you know, Braylon Staley out wide, Juju, uh, their uh, Juju Barrett, I believe, is a linebacker, the Shrine Boy there for those guys. He's a player for them as well. North Augusta, they've been kind of hard to figure out for me. You know, yeah. they uh, they lose to Dorman on the road, come back and, and and beat a good Greenwood team at Greenwood, I think it was, um, then get blown by, by Dutch Fork less. But that game was competitive for a while there. Yeah. Coach Bush has those guys playing pretty well. I like Beans Hunt, I like the, the Tillman kid at quarterback. I think Strong Thurman wins a close one here. Juju Stevens, yeah. Juju Barrett, somebody else. Anyway, Juju Stevens, you're right, Omar. Good call. Good call there. Um, but I think Strong Thurman in a close one here. Too much firepower outside uh, with Braylon Staley and those guys. Yeah, I agree with you. I think Strom's too good offensively, you know, for North Augusta. You know, North Augusta, like you said, they're kind of been an enigma this year. You know, up and down, not really sure what performance we're going to get, whereas Strom's been pretty solid throughout. Now they got Quan Edmond, got that quarterback situation figured out. Um, they seem to be rolling. Of course, Braylon Staley. Um, I think he got named to the Shrine Bowl this week. So he did. Um, good uh, along to, with good. Stevens, the two, two, yeah. two Shrine Bowlers there from Strom Thurman. So, so yeah, man, that's that's good to see. I think Strom Strom's going to be a tough out, man. They're a very good football team. They are. Next up, we got Indian Land going to North Carolina to play Parkwood. Liberty traveling to Pickens. Daniel at Riverside. Riverside uh, got blown out last, last week by Spartanburg. I thought it'd be at least be competitive, and it wasn't. Daniel continues to roll. I think they roll again, man. That offense is, is so tough right now. And the defense is playing well also. Riverside, they're, they're building. Like, I like what Coach is doing there. I like what Coach Rochester is doing for them. Yeah. Just not quite, I think, at that championship level yet. Yeah, no, not at all. But um, I think they are improving, like you're saying. Marcus Downs is a, is a heck of a player. They got a really good player outside that plays a uh, receiver. Yeah, Skinner. He he's very good. But I think Daniel, man, they're just a machine. It's it's one of those things where we have to make ourselves talk about Daniel because they're so good. And you know, you kind of just, you know, liken it to college sometimes with like an Alabama. Like they're so good, you don't really talk about them, kind of gloss over how well they're performing. Yeah. Um for because sure. they steamroll their steamroll talent. And, and I think I think Daniel's very good this year, and they're gonna win, win that game very easily. We've got Clinton at South Aiken. A game that, that I mean, South Aiken, I don't know what to make of those guys, Jarrell. I mean, you know, we we were high on them going into the year. Loved the offense there with Terrence Smith, Javon Edwards, Malik Scurry, and crew. But last week, they didn't even score points. I mean, the defense has yeah. not been good all year, but last week, the offense even struggled. Clinton had a tough loss last week. I was to Chapman by a point going for too late. Don't get it. And they're, they're kind of good. I think Chat, or Clinton will continue to get better because that's me injuries early in the year. These guys will get more and more comfortable with their new, new roles as the season goes along. I watched some highlights from that quarterback last week for, for Clinton. He looked really good. Uh, I think the Richardson kid is a big-time player for them. I think they're going to throw it more than they used to just because they're going to have to with him. Zay Johnson, a Shrine Bowler as well for them on the outside. I think Clinton gets a win down there at South Egg at the stable. You can take the think out of it. Clinton's going to win this game by a lot. <laughs> it's going to be a lot to a little. Um, just depends on what South Aiken we see on the offensive side. We know what they're going to do on defense, and that's give yeah. up points. So um, seems like they've kind of given up, which stinks, man, because I really like that program. Uh, love Terrence Smith, Javon Edwards, those guys. It just seems like they've kind of just thrown it in. You know, we were high on them because – we were thinking from last year, the defense yeah. has to improve, right? It yep. can't get any worse, and it got worse. That's the craziest thing there. Uh, but I like Clinton to win by a lot. I think the the Red Devils get one for sure. And then we've got the last game in the 4A slate, Colleton County at Woodland. I think Colleton County got their first win, I believe, uh, last week for Coach Kenlock there over North Charleston. Congrats to him on that first victory. Anything out of the 4A comments, Trail? Let's see what we got here. Zach's teasing me because I picked Buford to go to state, um, which, <laughs> you know, they still might be there. We'll see what happens. Um, let's see. Definitely shouting out Staley and Juju there yep, for Strom. Strom. If you guys have not seen the list of the South Carolina Strombo players, it's on our website. It's on our Facebook and our Twitter page. Uh, we got a, a blog at with all the Strom bowlers uh, and from where they played uh, or where they play in, in high school as well. Got a warning label on this one, non-PC comment from Chris. We'll throw it up there anyways. 
So we'll see. Yeah, yep. <laughs> I think we're both taking Gaffney, but it should be a fun ball game down there. Um, yeah, and Zach, you shouldn't be worried at all. You I guys think are you're right, Zach. Yeah, South Aiken is is struggling. But I tell you what, though, what, what, I, on the third reds for a second, with an offense that explosive, they could show up at any at any moment and win a ball game. I don't think it's this week, but yeah. they've got the playmakers where they could drop 45, 50 any given week if they have to. Yeah, I agree. But the problem is they give up 45, 50 every that's, week. What, that's the issue. What, that's the what issue. They, yeah. they, <laughs> they, they gave up 67 last week. It's, that's crazy, man. It's crazy that's stuff. That's the issue. Looking down now at the 3A slate, we've got Manning at Baptist Hill, Chester at Baseburg, Leesville, Hampton County at Brooklyn Casey. Another game that was in the running for our games of the week here. Hampton County continues to roll. Big win over Hilton Head Island last week. Zion Dobson is a stud there running the ball for them. Brooklyn Casey, a tough loss to Chapin. I know that game was kind of close score-wise, but I, I don't think it was really that tight. It didn't seem like. Yeah. Um, but they played some good football. I think they got two losses already, but, they, but they've been playing some solid football there for Coach Sharpie. Um, I think Hampton County wins again. You know, It's a tough place to play over at BC, but I like what the Hurricanes are doing there to Coach Hanna. I got to agree, man. Hampton County is a very good team. Again, this is Wade Hampton and Estill, you know, two teams that were extremely talented last year in their classifications combining to make one team here. Um, and they really haven't skipped a beat. They, they've been very impressive this season. That win over Hilton Head last week kind of cemented their status as a top five team um, yeah. in 2A. I, I think they're very good. Um, but I think BC is very good as well. So yeah. especially with what they had to replace, and you know, Tanner State and, and you know, Ezekiel Mays and things like that. So I think BC is a good team but I, I like Hampton County in that one. Will Young, the receiver, uh, Shrine Bowl guy for BC there. And, and Hampton County, like going back to last week, Hilton Island has some players on defense. Uh, a yes. couple uh, uh, a couple like D, uh, P, Power 5, Group of 5 talents there that, that Hampton County was able to get done against. Uh, so hats off to Coach Hanna and the boys there. Uh, yeah, I think win. they got uh, – it's Braylon Kitty and uh, Shake Thompson. Yep. Shake yep. Thompson, I think that's how you say his name. I mean, I believe, I believe he's a Shrine Bowler as well on the defensive yes. line for them. So that's huge, huge win for Hampton County. We've got Woodruff at Broome. Two uh, two upstate programs are getting after it. Woodruff been kind of up and down this year, it feels like. Uh, the offense looks great some weeks. Other weeks, not so much. Broome, you know, Jalen McGill's a stud. We know that. Kamaje Brackett, Brandon at quarterback's getting it done as well for them. Um, I do want to shout out Broome and, and Berea last week for for letting Chandler Lee a uh, big touch around late in the ball. I don't know if you guys saw, saw that clip or not, but uh, – both teams kind of uh, to help out Chandler. Let him have a big run. Uh, I, I don't know what's the PC way to say this, Jarrell, but uh, yeah. big touchdown for Chandler. A moment he's going to remember the rest of his life. It's on Twitter. It's on social media. Great moment there between that ball game, um, between those two squads. Uh, no doubt about it. Yeah, I got to agree, man. That's a great move. Great moment, you know, for Broom and that program. And they haven't skipped a beat. That's an underrated team. Um, I'm really high on Broom. I think the Centurions are, are, are you know, one of the top five teams in the state there. Um, should be a good football game, but I, I think Broom wins it. Yeah, I think McGill is too much for Woodruff. we got North Charleston at Burke. Lake City at Camden. This could be a sneaky good ball game here. Camden bounced back. Nice win over AC4 last week. Lake City, you know, lost to, to Lawrence Manning, I think, week zero. They've been playing some pretty football after that. Uh, they got a couple studs there um, at the running back spot along with Lorenzo McFadden Presley, a defensive line, a, a shrine bowler as well. Yeah. I think Camden hopefully has gotten it figured out a little bit. Um, but Lake City, it, they're, they're not a bad football team at all. Yeah, that's kind of like a coin flip. I don't know. Don't know what to make of Camden. Like, yeah. which Camden is going to show up this, for this football game? I would lean that way, think that they're going to win. But like you said, Lake City has played, you know, very good football. You know, they've had some some issues as far as, you know, the coach there over the summer and things like that. So, Hopefully they've rallied behind the team there, and uh, I think Camden wins it. We've got Whitmire at Carolina, Union County at Chapman. I think I saw a comment from RJ about this yep. one, Drill. Um, yeah, thoughts on Chapman? Yeah, Chapman, uh, you know, great win. Let's look over Clinton on the road. Tough win there. Union got their first win as well over Lawrence, like a late touchdown there. But Union's just not very good. Um, that's a program that's been trending downward the last couple of years. I think they're they're – Still not very good. I know they beat Lawrence, but no. Lawrence isn't very good either. Um, I think Chapman wins again. You know, I love what Coleman Gray's doing at quarterback. I love Matthias Scott. I love Rashawn Cunningham. Man, he's he's a stud at receiver, a, a big time playmaker. Uh, had some highlight catches last week against Clinton. I think the Panthers and Coach Cab continue to roll. 
Yeah, that's the most impressive thing, you know, winning, going down to Wilder, winning that game. Yeah. Uh, but then those catches from Cunningham, man, he's a stud. They're yep. a fantastic team. Had some big wins this year. I think Chapman Cruz is in that one too. Union, man, that's one of the ones we've 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 got a few that we've circled programs in South Carolina that we need, you know, need to get back. We've got Emerald going to Crescent. Salute at Gilbert, one of the games Luke mentioned that a minute ago. Loris at Lakeview. Uh, Lakeview, a team that's played pretty good football. You know, going into the year, talked to some folks down there, said that, you know, they were young and didn't know how good they would be, but they play good with Herlong and, and Foxworth and Kid and crew there. Derek, that's yeah, a big game for sure. Loris is getting better, a team that I was very high on last year. You guys heard me banging that drum all season long. Last year. Injuries. Last I'm high year. on this year, too. All right, I was about to get to that drum. I was setting it up. I was setting okay. it up. <laughs> Coach Greg Mann is doing a great job there. Jackson Huff uh, is a great player. I believe Trey Knox, I think, is also out there. He's a good stud for them. I think Loris wins this game. Just too much depth. Um, but Lakeview is a good 1A team. But I do like what Loris is doing um, and, and keeping on those guys in 3A. Yeah, I think Loris is just a little bit too much. But uh, I do like Lakeview as well, man. I don't know. That one's a tough one to pick. Uh, but, yeah, Loris by three. We'll go. We've got Blue Ridge at Landrum, a game that I saw Anthony ask about. The Highway 9 rivalry, Dillon at Marlboro County. Always a great matchup. I've seen uh, some pictures of some some jerseys on some, on some uh, road signs already. Yeah, man. Uh, I think they played twice last year, I think regular season and playoffs. You know, Marlboro County started off pretty good, a nice one over Sherall. Had a couple tough losses lately, you know, playing Oceanside and wasn't really competitive in that one. Uh, same with Scotland County there. I love what Purvis is doing for those guys. I love Coach McCollum there. They're getting better. Um, but I think Dylan is just too much. You know, Dylan played Hartsville really tough two weeks ago. Uh, yeah. Josiah, Josiah Thompson, the Shrine Lord, the, the running or the lineman going to South Carolina, got his fifth star from on from on three this week. Josiah Oxen down the quarterback's a good player. Uh, you know, Peanut Singletary had to fill in a run a couple weeks ago, had a big game. But Jamarian Fling is back. Uh, huge game against Stockasty. That kid's a stud running the football there. I like Dylan in this game, uh, you know, especially playing a, a team in Marlboro County I think is not quite where they want to be right now. I like Dylan on the road to win this game. And it's kind of a homecoming, too, for Coach Roller, a Marlboro County guy going back yeah. to coach, coach uh, against his alma mater. I still like the Wildcats in this one. Yeah, I think I think Dylan wins by a comfortable margin in this one. Uh, don't don't really think it's going to be close. Love the rivalry though; that can always throw a wrench in it, you know. And those those folks, man, they get really pumped up about that game down there. So that's very exciting for those communities, those counties. Like you said, those pictures with the jerseys are always awesome to see circulating on, on social media. Uh, but I don't I don't think Marlboro's ready for, ready for what Dylan has to, this week. Yeah, I, I like uh, I like the Wildcats. It should be a fun matchup. I think Dylan's got a really good offensive line. Marlboro County, pretty good defensive line, uh, but I think Josiah Thompson and the guys for the Wildcats a little too much, a uh, little too much up front for them. We've got Pendleton at Palmetto, Bishop England at Philip Simmons, Hanahan at Porter Gale. That's a fun Skiza three A matchup there. Uh, in, in between those two guys, we've got BHP at Walhalla. I mean, the Bears continue Ooh. to roll. Marquise Henderson, two hundred plus every week. It feels like Terrell. Those guys are, are really, really good there. Calhoun Falls at West Oak. Battery Creek at Whale Branch is our last 3A ball game. Any comments here on the 3A ranks trail? Yeah, we got some some trap, trap game for Dylan. Dylan. It could be. You know, if if it wasn't such a rivalry, I would I would agree with you more there, Zach. But I think Dylan's too good. Uh Johnson's yeah. Dylan at two plus. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I think Dylan and, and Fling and those guys are a little too much firepower. Robert, good to have you in here, man. Yeah, I think we we all like Dylan. I think the Wildcats win this ball game over at Marlboro County. Uh, let's see. Wesley says Chapman Union Chapman wins big. Yeah, I think we're all on Chapman's bandwagon as well. I think that's all I got. Right. Oh, here we got one more. Got Daniel by forty. <laughs> Daniel by forty. <laughs> yeah, it, it may be a name your score thing for Daniel this week for sure, Chris. We'll see how that one how that one turns out. Looking down now at the two A ranks. We've got Louisville and Andrew Jackson. Louisville looking to mm. avenge their long regular season loss from last year against the Volunteers. Louisville, I think the last four games have defeated their opponents 241-0. to zero. Uh, yes. Pretty, pretty impressive. I, I do think Andrew Jackson could score a little bit uh, with, with what they've got with Trey Thompson there and those guys. I think Louisville is going to win this ballgame handily, but I don't think it's a shutout. How about that? I don't think it's a shutout. I'll go with that. The bigger question this week – can Lewis will score 80? Ooh. <laughs> they, they, they've, they've gone 40, 50. 
or I think they've gone 50, 60, 70 in consecutive weeks. Can they get 80 this week? Well, we'll have to get Daydream in here to see, you know, what he thinks about it. But uh, it's going to be very interesting. I think Louisville is going to win by a lot. Yeah, he says right here, they're, they're so deep, man. Ian Grissom and, and Robinson and Howes. I mean, just Deion Brown, studs everywhere. A lot of talent for a 1A squad, I think. <laughs> Don't tempt them. Yeah, I think Louisville wins this ball game. They avenged that loss from last year on the road. We've got Silver Bluff at Barnwell, a fun game always down here. This one's at uh, Carter, WW Carter Field there down at Barnwell. Silver Bluff, uh, you know, took the tough loss because we got to Midland Valley. I still think they're very good. I still think they're a very, very good football team there. Uh, Barnwell, they've been kind of up and down. You know, uh, a, a couple nice wins, a couple tough losses. They, they had to come back late to, to be Aiken last week. But this is a rivalry game here. Coach Smith has, Coach Smith has guys ready to go. But I think Silver Bluff is a little too much, even though they're on the road. Yeah, I think so, too. I think Silver Bluff is is probably going to win this one by two touchdowns or more. Barnwell's just been way too inconsistent this year. Um, and I really like Silver Bluff. I think they got two Shrine Bowlers on the defensive line. You know, yep. got Jordan Boyd, um, and I'm blanking on the other Jayden one right Fuller. now. Jaden Fuller, there we go. And they got Jay uh, Neeson, too, in the middle. <laughs> and then, yeah, got Baby Man, Jay Neeson, man. They're just too tough. I think they're they're too much for Barnwell this year. Barnwell just – they lost a lot. Tyler Smith, man, that's, yeah, a, it, that's a huge void, you know, for Barnwell. Especially until they find a, a better running game to help out Cam Austin. Uh, I think it's going to be, be tough for him back there. I, I like Silver Bluff in that ball game. Mentioned this one earlier. Chester at Batesburg, Leesville. Cross at Buford. Mullins at Carver's Bay. Anson at North Carolina going to Central. Latta at Sherall here. Uh, Sherall team that's been very up and down. I think, you know, we talked to Coach Poole offseason, preseason. That interviews on our, our Facebook and YouTube pages there. Some young kids, you're going to see some of that, Some maybe some inconsistency and whatnot. Latta, a team that has been surprising everyone in the 1A ranks, a huge win over Johnsonville last week, a non-competitive game really there. Sherall, you know, a pretty good home field advantage for those guys, the Braves that for, for sure, but can Latta keep rolling, you think, Drill? I think so, man. Preseason, that's a game, you know, I would have easily just, you know, in in marker, you know, Shiraz going to win that football game. Um, but I got a completely reverse course there. I think Latta has been so impressive this yeah. year. The way they beat Johnsonville, they, they went 28 nothing first quarter, mm -hmm. you know, re recovered a couple onside kicks. So they're getting it done. Jamarian, uh, Jamarian Martin running back. Jamarian Jones. Jones, excuse yep. me. Um, they're just playing really good football right now. Going back to another team, too, that I want to talk, cross. That's a team that we need to, yeah. to keep our eyes on, too, man. They got an easier one against Buford this week. Buford hasn't played nearly as well as they did last year. But Cross is a team that's been sneaky um, as well. They're they're getting better and better after losing their first game. Well, that's the Calhoun County, who's a good football team. So, you know, no shame. Yeah. No shame in that. We got Mac B at Chesterfield, Eau Claire at Columbia, Fox Creek at Georgia Innovation slash Classics. So that'll be a, a fun one there for Fox Creek. Uh, game of the Week salute at Gilbert. We broke that one down earlier. If you guys uh, missed that, check it out at the beginning of the show. We've got Andrews at Green Sea Floyd. Andrews needs a bounce back win. That was a tough fall. So I think to walk on that surprised me there for those guys. Yeah. Newberry at Keenan. King Street at Lamar. That's an interesting game there, Drill. I think uh, yeah. King Street has some athletes. They can put up some points. Lamar. Quarterback was back, I think, first time last week for Zori Pierce. I think he threw three touchdowns after, after being out for a couple weeks. I think uh, the Sewer Foxes will be just fine when Regent Play comes along. Yeah, I think so, too. That was a good win. I think they won that one 19-10 last week over Mac B. Um, Like you said, get healthy at the quarterback spot. I don't think there's a team that's scheduled non-region harder than, than Lamar has, um, getting them ready to go into region play. I think they'll be just fine. I think they beat King Street this week. And it's tough, you know, for Lamar because – they're obviously it's always tough for one A schools to schedule non region in general, but then yeah, when you're a premier one A program like Lamar, a lot of the local one A programs don't want to play you, and then no. a lot of the other ones that are around you are all your region games already. So you got to schedule up, you got to schedule guys like Andrew Jackson and Airport and Dylan, and that's tough, man. Uh, and King Street as well as you know is a bigger school as well. So see how Coach uh, Burst and the guys do this week. We got Blue Ridge at Landrum, Scotts Branch at Lee Central. This game has been forfeited. Gray Collegiate at Mid Carolina. I believe the War Eagles. I don't think they have a game scheduled for this one, Drell. I don't um, think I don't so. Believe to make that one up with Edisto at Military Magnet. We mentioned this one, Marion at Myrtle Beach, one of our games of the week. Pillion at 96. Academic Magnet at Northwood Academy. Northwood Academy, tough loss last week to Hilton Head Christian. Academic Magnet is, is not horrible. Uh, they're a decent squad there. <laughs> Um, I think Austin Grady North a little too much. I think I think the uh the Chargers get back in on the right side this week. Yeah, I think so too. I, I love that uh, you know, 
classification. Not horrible. You know, that's that's pretty good there. <laughs> uh, Bishop England at Philip Simmons. I'm high on the Iron Horses. Liberty at Pick. I mentioned that one. Um, and I think that's all of the 2A slate. Any comments, Drone, any uh, address here? Yeah, man, we got Strom Thurman by 14. Yeah, we're all leaning to Strom, but I think it should be a good ball game for sure, Gregory. Yep, I think I'm similar. I think Louisville wins by by a few scores, but I don't think I get a shutout this week. Robert says, go Barnwell. That'll be a tough ball game down there this week. Let's see. Johnson said to put the Vikings on the map. They have strong showing at Straw. Yeah, the Vikings are looking good, man. Uh, I think they might already be on the map uh, at 5-0 and with the big win over Johnsonville, but we'll see what happens this week uh, for sure. I think that's it for now. Down to the 1A ranks, East Clarendon at Bamberg Earhart. East Clarendon, a big win over Hannah Pimpico last week. I don't think they have enough for Bamberg. I think Bamberg rolls in this one, but uh should be a, a, a neat ball game down there. Uh, Whitmire at Carolina. Let's see. McCormick at Christchurch. Ware Shoals at Dixie. C.A. Johnson at Hemingway. Caleb Pearson, one of our players of the week. Huge game last week for those guys. Stud. This 1A game here, Drill, was almost a, a game of the week for us. Uh, two undefeated squads. That's Calhoun County at HKT. Uh, yeah. Calhoun County, Christian Zachary, the Davenport kid are getting it done on the offensive side of the ball. But HKT, they beat a previously unbeaten Wagner Sally team last week, and it, it wasn't competitive. They were up 50 to nothing at one point. I had the stats for those guys earlier. They're averaging 52.8 on offense, allowing 5.5 on defense right now. Uh, they're playing some great, great football down there. I think Calhoun County is the best team they've played so far. Yes. Um, I like I like uh, the Saints to win this one. I think a little too much firepower. I think Christian Zachary in the return game as well. Uh, he has a big game. I think they win this ball game. Yeah, but what a you know heck of a start to the season for HKT, man. That's normally a score recently. You know, I've only been covering for about three years now. Yeah, you kind of just read past when when they play a game. Um, I, I got to do some more digging. I got to learn more about that team there because they seem to be legitimate. Um, they're having a great season. Really happy for those guys. But like you said, I think Calhoun County. They're very talented. I think they're a legitimate, you know, that win over cross, like we mentioned earlier, you know, that first week of the season kind of we're like, whoa, you know, that's a bad loss for cross. And like, as we progress now, it's like, dang, Calhoun County, Calhoun County's really good. So yeah, um, I, think th I think they win the game and, um, you know, but I think HKT makes it competitive. Two teams here that need a win. Hannah Pamplico at Johnsonville, uh, you know, HP. I love their offense. Start off really hot, put up tons of points. Um, they had a couple bad losses now, honestly. Uh, you know, last week to East Clarendon, lost to Sherall as well. And then Johnsonville, North Central lost week zero. Come back, they're playing pretty good football. Blown out by Latta last week. Uh, Hannah Pimpico did beat that North Central team that beat Johnsonville. Um, yeah. the flashes at home are tough. I, I, I think I'm going to go with Coach Crib to have a bounce back game here. I, I, I trust what they're doing a little bit more than what HP's doing. Uh, I think Malik, Malik Shippey and Johnsonville gets a win. Two roller coaster, you know, teams yeah. here. I have no idea, man. I'll I'll go the other way around. Give me HP in this game. <laughs> We've got Edisto at Military Magnet. We mentioned this is a game of the week. Southside Christian at St. Joseph's. Great Falls at Thornwell Charter. I saw Thornwell Charter won their first game in however many years. They just restarted the program, so it was a long time. I got a win last week. Hats off uh, to the, I think the Saints. I believe they are. Um, we'll go with it. those guys. Blackfield Hilda at Wagner Sally. The Fighting Hawks at Blackfield Hilda continue to roll drill. Big win over Denmark Olar last week. Wagner Sally, like we mentioned, got the doors blown off <laughs> by HKT. I yeah. think Blackfield Hilda, Coach Kevin Jones, they got those guys rolling the right direction. Yeah, I think so too. I think they're a very good team. Uh, I don't think it's going to stop. I think they're 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 a team that's going to contend for the lower state championship there. The last game uh, in 1A, we have RSM at Williston Elko. Um, any comments on 1A, Drell, that we need to uh, to chat about? <laughs> HKT did this last year. Too. Yeah, it certainly could happen, man. Uh, you never know, but that was an impressive win last week, I felt like. Yeah, I think that's all we have right now. Zach's giving us some clarification. They are, they the, are the Saints. Saints. Okay, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, and Zach, do you remember how long it's been since they won a game? It had been... I want to say, I think maybe it was the 90s, but I don't know for sure, but it's been quite a while there for Thornwell Charter. Good win uh, for those guys. But let's take a quick look at the uh, the Skiza slate here before we move into the next part of the program. We've got Lawrence Academy at Jefferson Davis, Hammond at Camden Military, 
Williamsburg at Northside Christian. The Stallions, after a big win over PD Academy last week, they are rolling with Teague Ward and those guys. Uh, came into more getting it done as well. Lee Academy at Cross Episcopal. Buford Academy at Hilton Head Christian. That's a fun skis of game there. Calhoun Academy at Orangeburg Prep. Kings Academy at Carolina. Wardlaw at Holy Trinity. Colin and Prep at Spartanburg Christian. Greenwood Christian at Thomas Humphrey. Mentioned our skis of game of the week. Patrick Henry at Clarendon Hall. Wilson Hall at First Baptist. Coach Birch got his first win last week. Great to see that. That was him. awesome. King Academy at Richard Wynn. Community Christian at Newberry. Hilton Head Prep at PD Academy. Homecoming for the Golden Eagles at Lawn. Should be a fun matchup there. I like the Golden Eagles to roll. They got uh, kind of a rotating quarterback spot going on right now, but it's fun when they put Richardson there. They put Trussell out wide. They put Trussell in the corner. They put Richardson out wide. It's fun what they're doing there. They're getting the offense rolling there, it seems like, uh, under Coach Jonathan King. we got Ben Lippin at Cardinal Newman. John Paul II at Florence Christian. Dorchester at Dillon Christian. Andrew Jackson Academy at Faith Christian. Augusta Christian at Heathwood Hall. Bethesda at Palmetto Christian, Oakbrook Prep at Holly Hill, St. John's at Thomas Hayward. Drill, let's get a shout out uh, to our friends of the program. Unless we have any comments. Take your financial game to the next level with Founders Federal Credit Union. Reach your full potential. Relax. Join Founders today. Visit an office near you or relaxjoinfounders.com to apply. Federally insured by NCUA member qualification required. The George Agency has been serving the insurance needs of South Carolina for over 40 years. They're a full-line insurance agency concentrated in employee benefits and health insurance with an office in Mullins and Merle's Inlet, but they can help you all across the state. They have clients in Greer, Rock Hill, Columbia, and more, so wherever you are, they can help. Give Bradley, Wayne, Richard, and the crew a call or check them out online at thegeorgeagency.net. That's thegeorgeagency.net. Okay, Drill, any comments uh, from the chat we need to mention before we look at the next portion of the program? Let's get these pulled up. Computer's not cooperating. Let's see. Got the first win since 06. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't remember what the year was. So, basically, I guess 17 years there for Thornwell. Hats off to those guys. Yep. That's all we've got right now. Perfect. Well, Drill, we unveiled uh, our first polls of the season last week, and I think uh, we've got a little bit of a shake-up this week after a couple you know, moving parts here, but – we say this every week that we started doing this because we didn't like the other polls that were out there. Uh, we feel like all of those folks don't see a lot of the state. They just cover one part of it. So we think that we do a pretty good job of covering the whole state here. So let's take a look, Jarrell, um, at the, our new week five polls moving the chains. In the 5A ranks, consensus number one, Somerville, a tie for second, Hillcrest and Spartanburg, fourth, Burns, and fifth, Fort Dorchester. I mean, the Green Wave continued to impress. Big win last week over, over uh, Sumter. You know, Hillcrest continues to roll as well. Uh, a big, big blood over Powdersville. 5A was tough, man, you know, because it's just almost every team seems to have a good win or two, but also maybe a, a bad loss or so as well um, outside of, you know, like a Somerville squad there. So tough for me to rank, but I think the Green Wave are, are the number one uh, right now for sure. Yeah, we all agreed on Somerville, and then it was kind of pure chaos after that. Like you said, like you have Hillcrest. Hillcrest is undefeated as well, uh, yeah. but just you know their level of comp just really yeah. you know doesn't match up with the other schools that we talked about. Spartanburg, you know they've kind of been up and down. I've kind of given Spartanburg more credit for a loss than anything. That two point loss, you know, to Grayson out of Georgia was yeah. was really big for them. You know, but then the other teams, like you said, like Burns, that's a tough loss to Chapman. You know, 4D got blown out by that Grayson team by 41. I think we'll see some movement, though, this week. You know, just like we saw last week, I think we replaced um, about half the poll in five of this. this Looking this down at 4A, Northwestern, unanimous, all three first place votes there. Second, South Florence. Third, James Island. Fourth, Irmo. And a tie for fifth with Hartsville and South Point. 4A, I feel like it's so deep, Jarrell. I, I like a lot of these teams. You know, Northwestern was just so impressive last week. Uh, they do have that one loss to Providence Day, but that was a game they certainly hung tough in, could have won that ball game. South Florence, a, a, a great win on the road at South Point last week. Um, you know, I do worry a little bit about the offense there. They haven't quite gotten it rolling on that side, especially through the air yet. So I think they'll get better as the season goes along. James Island's kind of laying in the weeds, man. They're, they're blowing everybody out down there. Uh, Braxton Scott's doing his thing. Wish Ravenel's doing his thing. The defense is playing lights out. They're a great squad there under Coach McCoy. Irmo, a team that we, that we put it four, and I, I 
I've got mixed feelings about Irma, man. Uh, I, yeah. I love their size. I love their physicality. I, I love, you know, Jay Allen Hendricks, the running back. The passing offense didn't do a lot last week, but didn't really have to either, I would say, uh, you know. But the defense looked good too, man. I, I think they're a very good football team. Are they as good as is that one, two, and, and three slot? I don't quite know yet. Yeah, that's a tough one there, you know, and that's what I went back and forth with, you know, those three at the bottom, you know, you had Hartsville, Irmo, um, and South Point. South Point's done some good things, suffered a few losses, you know. Yep. I think both their losses are, you know, three points or less. Um, yeah. Then you've got Irmo. It's a good story. Um, I'm not, like you said, I'm not sure, you know, how good they are because that was supposed to be the test. You yeah. know, they played Hartsville, but then, you know, I hate to be like those, you know, NFL announcers. You kind of got to put an asterisk by it because you didn't see the best version of Hartsville in that game. You yeah. know, there was a lot that was missing there. So it, it was difficult. But I think one thing is for sure that Northwestern's the number one team in 4A. I, I agree. I agree. And but, you know, in 4A so deep, we could have put teams like, you know, could have put, uh, uh, Midland Valley up there. Yeah. I mean, just a, a lot of squads that could have made the cut. But looking at it, 3A now, we've got split first place votes here. The only classification we have that we have BHP with two first place votes, Daniel with one first place vote in second place, Dylan at third, Ty for fourth with Gilbert and Crestwood. Also, three votes, Broom and Philip Simmons. Another really deep class. Uh, you know, BHP has been so impressive. I, my worry with them, Drill, is the, is the passing offense. If they have to throw it ever, yeah. can they do it? I don't know. Um, you know, Daniel's kind of tough to get a read on because we, we know they're good. We think they're good, but the, the competition level makes it tough to, to really judge them. You know, I like Daniel. I, had, I gave him a first place vote. I, yeah. I like what the lines are doing. I think Dylan got a lot better last week with having Jamarian fling back. They're going to be tough as well, but just creeping there on the outside. Philip Simmons, I like that squad a lot, man. The Iron Horses are tough. Obviously, uh, you know, a team like Gilbert who just snuck in the, in the top five is rolling. They're trending in the right direction. We got guys like Buford who are just kind of laying in the weeds out there. We got Clinton who we know is good. 3A has some good football teams as well. Yeah, and that's the thing, man. I'll say, like, I voted for Broom, man. I think Broom deserved yep. to, to be up there. I think they're a good team. I know you're high on Phillip Simmons. Those are teams that are very deserving. 3A is the hardest one because it is yeah. so deep. Um, like you said, I got BHP at the top just because they have steamrolled everybody, and I give them credit. You know, we talked about 4A. West Side is a really good football team. Yeah. And, you know, they beat the brakes always, you know, like they won that game convincingly. So that's kind of where I've given them, like you said, though, the two that we've we talked about every year, Daniel and Dylan, you know, they're going to be there. So, you know, um, it is what it is. And uh, we'll see how it all shakes out. That's why they play the games, right? Yeah. Looking at two way, we've got Gray Collegiate in first, Oceanside Collegiate in second, Hampton County in third, Marion in fourth, and a three-way tie for fifth, <laughs> Abbeville, Saluda, and Silver Bluff. Uh, so we look, we managed to get seven teams ranked in our uh, in our top five <laughs> poll somehow in two way. But you know, and, and Gray's gonna be such a, such a tough one to rank throughout the rest of the year, Drew, because they've got so many great wins uh, early yeah. in the year. You know, a Crestwood team, a Cayman team, a, a Hammond team, Christ, Christ Church. Christ Church. But now it's going to be tough to judge them. They're playing, you know, St. John's last week, who's, a, I think, a nationally ranked squad. Um, this game, you know, it was out of hand early. They scored some late, but we never really had a chance to win, I, I would say. Uh, they've got some bigger teams, I think, out of other, you know, Georgia and Florida scheduled down the, down the stretch here. The teams that I just don't know a lot about, you know, so it's going to be hard to judge them. But I, I like their talent. And I think for them, the, the key is just being able to play games. Uh, you sure. know, honestly, like not really mattering who it is, but they just need to be able to play football and not have to, uh, you know, sit out five, six weeks before getting back in the playoffs. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people hate that. You know, we have a lot of, you know, fans, you know, people who follow us who are supporters of two A programs. And, you know, they don't want to see Gray and Oceanside at the top of the poll, but I can't justify moving Gray if they're not losing two in state teams. You know, like I, but also, I understand why these teams aren't playing them. So For I sure. completely under I understand that that part of it. So not like I'm you know a gray apologist or anything like that. But from what I've seen, they're the best team in two A. Yeah. Um, I think Oceanside's a very good squad as well. You know, it is crazy. We had the the top four teams were were pretty much set between the three of us, and we all voted somebody different in that five slot. So just just shows you know how we have differing opinions. Um, but all are very deserving to be ranked. Like you said, we got seven and seven and five spots. And it could change yeah. this week too. You know, when we get a uh, if we get a big uh, strong Thurman win, they probably jump oh, yeah. in. You know, depends what happens with Marion at Myrtle Beach, they could go up or down. Seeing how that ball game goes, Saluda as well over Gilbert. That's a, that's a good ball game as well. So. 2A will be fun to follow this week. In the 1A ranks, 
All three first place votes go to Louisville. We've got St. Joe's in second, Calhoun County in third, Christchurch in fourth, Bamberg Earhart in fifth. Also, three votes Latta and Whale Branch. Another class that could change a lot. You know, Southside Christian could easily win that ballgame for St. Joe's, flip the whole script there in 1A. Um, I like Louisville to win, but that's a tough matchup for them as well. Calhoun County kind of flying under the radar. Same thing with Christchurch. They got a couple early. I think they got three losses already, I think. Uh, they lost to uh, – no, two losses, excuse me. lost to, to Gray and then to, to Riverside. But they're going to get better under Deshaun Reeder, uh, strong bowl guy. He's a stud there for them. Bamberg, they are always tough. We know that. Their one loss to Denmark Olar, who has kind of fallen apart last week, it feels like there for them. Uh, Will Branch, I know John's high on those guys. They're playing football. And then Latta, the team that, you know, we just don't know what to do with. I mean, they were – Hadn't played anybody until last week. They play somebody, they blow them out. So it's like, man, should, should there be three? I don't know. Like that. Sure. One A is a, a, a deep uh, classification as, as well, it feels like. Yeah, we'll learn a lot about that Latta team. You know, them not being officially in the poll. We'll learn about them in their region play. <laughs> so yeah. we'll, we'll learn quickly how good they are. Uh, but yeah, I think I think Louisville's clearly the number one team, just the way that they perform. Yeah. You know, they ran into a bus all with the Oceanside. Uh, but there's some really good teams teams in 1A there. St. Joe's, like you mentioned, Calhoun County, you know, laying in the weeds. It's it's going to be a lot of fun to see how they start separating themselves in region play. And then, obviously, a team that didn't get a vote that's always there at the end, that's Lamar. I mean, we yeah. we know they're going to be right there at the end, Drell. Sure. They're, they're, they're coming. Lamar's coming. We know that. Um, yeah. and, I, and I like Blackville Hill a lot. I really do. Um, so, I think they could be uh, – some make some noise in the playoffs. But any comments on the polls we got here? I think we do. I just haven't been able to flip over there yet. Let's take a look. <laughs> Let's see, John's got some. Gilbert Handle Saluti. I think so, too, man. I think uh, the Indians a little too much firepower at home, especially. Yeah, if, if Strong Thurman beats North Augusta, I think they make the ranks. I think you're exactly right, Williams. Yeah, so if Gilbert beats Saluda, they probably jump up even higher than 3A pole also. Corey says Marion better than Hampton County. I think I had Marion ranked ahead of Hampton County. I don't know if I did or not. I may be mistaken. Did. Uh, I like the Swamp Foxes, man. This is a, a tough matchup for them this week, uh, but should be a fun one down there at the beach. Drill, you can take this one. Oh yeah, man. I just, you know, it's just too deep, man. It's uh it's three A, man. They're they're just so deep. That's the hard thing. It's my well, I mean the team that beat them, Chapman didn't get any votes either. So yeah, it's a tough tough class in three A. It's we're only ranking five, you know, and it's it's crazy. Uh we got some Yeah, we bumped out exactly right, bro. Yeah, we um it's we early. try to be kind of fluid with it, man. You know, like we, uh, you know, whenever wherever we see fit, uh, I think Gaffney will, will turn around and be good for sure. Same thing, Midland Valley. I think they're going to be uh, in the top five at some point here pretty soon. I believe Williams. Let's see. Zach says he believes Irma should be ranked higher at the performance. Yeah, that was a tough one. Like, you know, like Drill and I said, not sure if they're quite ready for that one or two spot yet. Uh, but but we'll see as they continue to play in their region. We got some love for Whitmire too, man. That's a team that's that's very much improved. Yeah, um, Coach Campbell's really got them rolling. They had a big win over Mid Carolina a couple weeks ago. Big win over Spartanburg Christian. Uh, plenty of good football there. I think they beat uh, Ware Shoulder early in the year as well. Um, the Wolverines are playing good, man, for sure, Tony. No, no doubt about it. All right, I think we have to take a look at the Pick'em graphics. Um, I've been trying to avoid this because tough this one is, for me uh, last week. Our Pick'em uh, contest brought to you by Hannah Engineering, as always. Uh, a lot of fun. We had a seven-way tie for first place in week four. Chase, Kane, Nathan, James, Chris, OGB, and Sherm, all with a nine spot. Great job by those guys. Um, and about, I don't know what, 20 folks tied for eight. I'm not going to read all those there with eight spot. Uh, John got an eight to lead us three. I had six. Drill had five. Ooh. A tough week across the state, man. Uh, I, I'm, I'm lucky to get six, I feel like, right? Dude, I was lucky to get five. Um, didn't think I was going to do that well as the score started rolling in. Uh, but yeah, no, that was a tough one. You know, it was a high caliber week, you know, and I just showed that I don't know anything about football. So let's look at the overall scores and make myself feel better. Overall, pick them <laughs> leaders. We have J.D. Patterson and Chase H. at 41. Dale B. At second with 40. Peyton C. with 39 and third. Tied for Kane, Lance, and Dallas at 38. Then Nathan, Josh, Kyle, Haley, Brandon, Curtis, and Franklin all at 37. Drell and John tie with 37. I'm right there with 36. Um, if you guys have not been a part of this yet, hop in there. We may have some weekly prizes down the stretch for you. It's posted on our website along with our Facebook and Twitter page as well. Uh, you just get the picks in about 7 o'clock on Fridays. We'll start a new contest for the playoffs as well. So it's a lot of fun. Gives you a reason to follow football across the state and not just your team or your region. So 
definitely join that. It's a it's a a lot of fun to do each and every week. Um, uh, Drew, a couple comments here I wanted to to, to get to for wrap up here. I want to shout out our players of the week. Brought about George Aiden. So we had Jaden Allen Hendricks out of Irmo. We had Caleb Pearson from C.A. Johnson and Turbo Richard from Northwestern. Three running backs with three huge ball games last week to earn our Player of the Week honors. As always, guys, if you see somebody with a big game, shoot that to us on social media, email, whatever. We'd we'll love to get those stats uh, from you guys. We mentioned this earlier briefly, the Shrine Bowl. Those rosters came out on Sunday. If you have not seen that, I've got them posted on a blog on our website. That's also on our social media pages. Go check out who made it, what school they're from, and all that stuff. Uh, a lot of cool stuff there. Drew, anything else uh, you want to talk about uh, on this week's show here before we kind of wrap up for the evening? Like I said, I think the theme is, uh, you know, quality over quantity this week. I think there's some really good matchups. I'm really excited. Um, the more we talked about it, I'm I'm really interested to see that Marion uh, Myrtle Beach game. I'll, I'll definitely yeah. be t- tuned into that. Don't know where we're going this week, though. We'll have to figure that out. Um, got to keep stay close to home. You know, we got to we got to be uh, Death Valley on Saturday pretty early, so we can't get too far away this week. Uh, That's but right. I do. Want, I got to go back. Hartsville too. Um, got to give them a shout out, man. That was a lot of fun. Got to give a shout out to Coach Pearson over at yep. Spring Valley, putting us on Westwood Barbecue. Uh, we love barbecue buffets. If you have not, you know, check them out in Hartsville. Fantastic. I ate probably 20 pounds of food for $11. <laughs> so it was fantastic. Um, then we had a top rank, you know, hot dog too inside yeah. the stadium there in, in Kellytown. But fantastic, you know, trip down there last week. Yeah. And if you guys, uh, if you don't listen to our recap show that comes out on Sundays, it's on our Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, everywhere you can find it there. Um, brought to you by Folly Row, our recap shows are. We had a, a couple good questions, one of them being about the Shrine Bowl selections being so early in the year. You know, hop in there, get Drew and I's thoughts on that. Uh, definitely love to have y'all tune in for that. If you guys have just tuned in for the first time, we appreciate you. As always, like our page, share it, comment, tell your friends. Trying to grow this and get it as big as we can. We're on all social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, et cetera, at Move and Change, M-O-V-I-N-C-H-A-I-N-S. Moveandchange.com is our website. Uh, like I mentioned, our podcast on Apple, Spotify, Google, and more. Moving the Change brought to you by Founders Federal Credit Union. We do a live preview show, 7 o'clock on Tuesday nights on YouTube and Facebook. Hope you guys can hop in. Love to get your comments from about your favorite teams. We do a live scoreboard show Friday night spaces over on Twitter slash X about 10, 30, 11 on Fridays. It's a great time to catch up on all the scores from the night while you're driving back to your house or wherever it is. Hop in there. We have a lot of folks who get in there and comment about their favorite team's games. Love to have you join us for that as well. Stay tuned for our players of the week, our teams of the week, games of the week, our pick em contest, all of that great stuff, man. But I do want to take a second, Drill, and just give a shout out to everybody that uh, has been supporting us, man. You know, it's great to see almost Dude. every game we go to now. We have folks coming up saying, Hey, you know, great to meet you guys. Appreciate what y'all do, whether that's coaches or ADs or fans or whatever, even players. It's awesome, man. We appreciate you guys, you know, looking out for us. And uh, it's been really cool to, keep, you know, have this grow like it has the last couple of years. And I told somebody the other day that John and I went to lunch twice two weeks ago. Uh, both days had somebody come up and say something to us. So we're just, you know, eating lunch. So it's, it's super cool to see that, man. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun for sure. Yeah, man, I appreciate everybody, especially everyone jumping in, commenting, you know, whether they agree, disagree, love the interaction, man. Um, you know, that's the beauty of sports. That's a, that's why we get passionate about our teams, our players, our communities. That's what makes it a lot of fun. Like you said, man, it's so cool being able to interact with so many people across the state. And if you see us out, like we always say, man, come talk to us because we want to know, you know, what you got going on, who you think's the best, what you think of what we do, uh, because, it, you know, Put a lot of work into it, but it's a lot of yeah. fun as well. So appreciate each and every one of you for sure. And uh, yeah. I got to throw this comment up here, man. Corey, you're right. Corey. What's the barbecue was great, man. Uh, that was my first time. Um, I loved it. All the sides were great. That, that was a great spot for a pregame meal on Friday. Yeah, and then one less, you know. Tony, uncalled for, Tony. <laughs> uncalled for, Tony. <laughs> but cool, man. Call for, but yeah, appreciate you guys' support as always, man. Uh, moving the change brought to you by Founders Federal Credit Union. For Jarrell Hendricks, I'm Kevin Thomas. This has been our week five preview show. We will catch you guys soon. <laughs>